Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today I'm excited to talk about a brand new feature inside of SmartSuite Automations, which is the ability to find records. Now, usually we're finding records based off of something from the initial triggering record and then matching on that criteria to find these records and then update them. Now, let's dive into a use case that we have. Now, to set the stage here, I've got a form submission app that I created. And you can think of this as a web form that we have on a website. We've got a contact form, user can fill in their information, and it's going to fill out a form submission record that it will create. But oftentimes when people contact us and they put in their contact information, it just creates that static record. But ideally, if they're a customer of ours already, we would want to know which contact record that that's associated with. I have my contacts app here and I can see my list of contacts. And what I've gone ahead and done is in the form submissions record, I've created a link to my contacts record. And on this side, I've made it so that it can't allow linking to multiple records. And that's because we want to have a single submission tied to a single contact record. If I'm on the contacts, however, and I take a look at my form submissions and I modify that field settings, I do allow linking to multiple records. And the reason for that is because a single contact could contact us multiple times and we'd wanna be able to link to those form submission records. So the whole point of this particular use case is in making the system more usable by attaching this to their contact record. We have a historical record of the form submissions. Maybe we wanna do other things like assign who actually is going to contact that person back based off of ownership. But in this particular example, let's look at the automation needed to assign that contact record to the form submission. We'll hop into our automations. And I've created an automation for this already to relate the form submission to the contact record. Now we're gonna have this fire when a form is submitted. I'm specifying that we want that web form from our form submissions app. Of course, we could choose other triggers that we want to utilize instead maybe when a record is created, for example. But really simple here, don't need any additional conditions. And then our action, our first action that we have is going to be to find records. And I can take a look and here's our list of steps here. And you'll now find that the find records action is available to you amongst the other options that you've had in the past. This is where the magic occurs is in this step. So again, I've selected the solution that I'm using. And in this case, we already had the form submission take place as our trigger. So now we want to find the correct contacts. And in this case, it'll just be one contact that matches based on a set of criteria. So I'm giving this a name just to be descriptive because we'll see this used other places in the system. I'm saying find contact. And now I added a condition where I'm saying that the email and this is the email of the contact record where email is equal to, I can choose fields from the trigger and choose the email. And we're saying that if the email of the contact record matches the email that the user submitted as part of the form submission step, then we have a match. And we're going to take that record to our next step. Now we have an to update records, we're going to update the contact records that it finds. So again, we're choosing the app as contacts, and then we're selecting the records to update. This actually comes in automatically. So it recognizes the fact that we just had this find action to be able to find the contacts. Now, there might be scenarios where you're creating multiple steps, and so you have to choose between multiple find actions, but most of the time this populates for us. And then the one kind of tricky or interesting step to this is in updating the form submissions. Again, we're on the contact record now. We want to update the link to the form submissions. And this is a little bit different. If you've seen my video that I created before on how to link to records that are just created, you're familiar with the idea that we typically put the title in this step, but we have an additional piece to this. I'm going to X these out just to walk through the process here. We're doing the linked form submissions as our field and the values that we're going to get. Remember that we have both the initial trigger 
and we have the find contact action. And we're going to use a field from each of those. So from the trigger, we're going to choose the title. This is the title of the form submission itself. Now, the way I remember this is title trigger. We're grabbing the title from the trigger. And this would make sense according to what we did in the past video, where we're looking up that title. And now we want to do one more step where we add an additional value. But instead of from the trigger, we're grabbing it from our find contacts action. And this is where we're going to get the form submission link. So the link, the field that links to the form submission record we want to put in here. And the reason we do this step is because if we only use the title, then if you remember on the contact record, we have the ability to link to multiple form submissions. And if we already had a form submission record there and this automation ran and we had the title, it would actually overwrite our existing data. So it would get rid of that relationship that we had to the previous form submission. What we're doing is we're essentially passing in, here's the new record we want you to link to. And then we're kind of passing in a list of the existing records that are in this form submission step. So imagine if we already had two form submissions, we're saying, hey, here's the brand new form submission from this title. And then here's form submissions one and two that we also want you to keep to make sure we don't overwrite that. So hopefully that explanation makes sense of why we have both the title and the form submissions that we're going to have updated on the form submissions field itself. We'll go ahead and save that automation. And then we're back here. And again, remember the automation fires on the form. So we'll go ahead and submit it. And we come back here and we can see that we do in fact have the form submission record. Now, I do encourage you to be patient with the next step because as the automation runs, the find record step takes a little bit longer than some other automations because it's essentially parsing through the records in the system to find it based off of that criteria. So sometimes it can take a minute here to be able to find that information. And now that this is refreshed, we can see that we have Justin Dreyer as the contact record the automation is successful, looked up our contacts. It said, okay, which of these contacts matches that email address of that user, Justin Dreyer? And then it updated that contact to link to the form submission. And if we go on the contact side of things, we can look and see for Justin Dreyer, we do in fact have a link to that form submission. So if you're using this as a CRM and you're keeping track of Justin Dreyer and you can see, Oh yeah, what was it that he emailed us about last time? You could go ahead and open up the record and that will take you to that form submission to see what the user said. I'm really curious to hear how you plan on using find records in your next smart suite automation. Of course, if you have questions about automations or your smart suite implementation, head on over to our website at Automation Helpers, where we're happy to do a free consultation with you to help you get up and running on smart suite.